We're not using the tube black this time. That was only special occasion. Oh. <laughs> Y'all you see Mr. No, I thought it was a green thing. I know. I thought it was a green thing. I thought it was a green thing. I was going to get started. So this is just blue and brown. I ain't finished. I want this to be a little more brown. So it's more or less dark, dark brown than black. But the blue makes it closer to black. Something like that. And I've got... I can't see. I'm sure. Thank you. i got a pretty good bit of water in here, so I'm going to go ahead and make some more paint. Yeah. That's pretty close to black. I want it to lean just slightly towards brown. And so the idea is I want this canvas to have a kind of a glow in the middle of it. So we're going to start dark on the corners, especially the bottom corner here. And you're going to have to kind of work quick. And it almost melt your dark color around. Put some in every corner while it's wet. I'm gonna um, then start coming back in with the white and just blending that. So if I take the white and mix with what I have, I get a little lighter color. Not worried about brush strokes just yet. Not really worried about them at all. It's it's gonna have some. That's okay. You got something to say, brother? In other words, say it louder that we can all hear you. Wow. I'd make him sit and time out. Now, the, the center of this, I want it to be about here. So, off uh -huh. center from center, it's up. It's up and left of center, so I want it about right there. So as I'm going around, adding a little white each time. You all know the first step is always just put some paint on the canvas. We've got to get it covered. Get a lot of... Uh, I love that. Get something covered on the canvas so we can paint over it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get back towards this middle. I'm going to give me a couple of paper towels, brother. Boy, oh, now I'm brother here. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Brother Man. Not in trouble with right <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> Reverend. Yeah, Rev. Back with some pure white kind of in the middle. And I don't want to leave the middle white because I do want to cover it with, cover everything with paint. But that right there is pretty good. Pretty good. Now, at this point is where everybody works it to death and... <laughs> Wondering why the paint starts rolling up and all that stuff. <laughs> if you have it sort of dry, you can kind of lightly, lightly feather this as long as it's still wet. Yep. But you kind of have to work in one value at a time, kind of work in circles. Work this value because if you move out, you're going to get more paint on your brush. Okay. So I'm going to work that out a little bit at a time. Not caring about these brush strokes too much because they are all going to get covered up. Every bit of this is going to get covered up. <laughs> The hope with this is that some of it shows through and that, that little bit of value shows through at the end. Right. Are you moved over All right. That little corner down there don't have enough. Those watching the video, we're really sorry. Why don't want to be saying that we need to look at it? Alright, y'all can do that. Yeah, I think I everybody that. got that. Yeah. Now you notice that it is it's a little short. Yeah. That's okay. We're gonna push it to the bottom. So just have it on the bottom. I got mine taped on one side because we're gonna be doing some tracing on it. I don't want to trace everything here. And you notice how blurry this is. This was put through a Photoshop filter to make it that way on purpose <laughs> to bring out some of the uh, highlights and things that we need. Mm -hmm. All we want to look at right now. Uh, what we're gonna do on this painting is do a. In, in the way of kind of doing a sketch, we're going to do just the values, okay? We're going to keep with this brown, dark brown, black color we're using, maybe even go a little blacker on parts, and try to block out the entire canvas in just values, okay? Darks, when I say value, I'm talking about dark and light. So our really, really dark areas like right here, and then kind of mid-range areas, and then the lighter areas. So um, to start with, what I want to do is kind of trace and if you've got, you know, one sheet of this, you can just kind of move it around. It works. Please, and make sure it's facing the right way. <laughs> right. Make sure you got the shiny side to the canvas. Because if you don't, it will not be on there. You get that trace. Yeah, so, all of it on the back of the paper. 
I'm just going to kind of sh trace out some of these shapes. I can't even tell what a lot of this is because it's so blurry, which is very convenient. I don't <laughs> but from back want you there, stressing you about it. Good. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, it does. So I see some really dark areas. I'm just kind of highlighting those dark areas. I mean, just drawing around those dark areas. Um, and not even thinking about what it is or what I'm painting. I'm going to come back later and yeah, I'm drawing off my sketch now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off your paper. paper? Yeah, off my paper a little further. Uh, put some of this in here. The part there. The darkest of the darks, especially, I want to kind of get those shapes in. All of this right in here. These are rocks. They really don't have to be exactly this, so I'm not spending too much time thinking about exactly how they look. Not trying to be perfect on their shapes and sizes. Uh, I see a clear line where the water, you know, goes from white to to brown. I'm going to kind of sketch that in. I'm going to give myself this line across here because that's going to mm -hmm. tell me where to put things. Um, up here, you see there's kind of a land mass. If you look at the small picture, you can see it a little better. A little bit of a little bit of a cliff there. Your paper's not there. I'm just going to get some of that in there. Some of these lines, these cracks. This tree here, maybe that one there. General idea. Mainly, what I want is where the the shapes of color kind of are. The light and dark, mm -hmm. light spot. I'll just move my stuff over again. So right here, <coughs> really separating kind of light and dark. finish those trees out. We got a couple of trunks in here, here and there. Now I thought about doing the drip things. I think it would have just been all mostly covered up this time, will you? But having that drawn in place, that's pretty, isn't it? It is gorgeous. A whole lot nice of pretty abstract. Mess. It was like a cow. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a cow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm going to use this kind of about one inch flat brush here, three quarter inch, whatever that is. Kind of big brush, you don't want to be doing a lot of little brush. So this is not paint by number, this is not a final picture. You know, come in here and put your perfect little, you know. We're gonna do this very, very, very loose and quick. What do we need to look at? And I'm looking at my reference here to see what's darkest. I'm gonna start with the darkest color first. I'm gonna make some black, and I'm gonna get this just as dark as I can get it. So that's a 50-50 black and brown, I mean blue and brown there to get that. Thick black, not a lot of water in that at all. Darkest of the dark. Where did they go? Did I not have my stuff under there? Let me trace that real quick again. I lost part of it. <laughs> I didn't have my uh, middle. This one particularly. Uh -huh. Nice and dark. Yeah, you got it. Probably got them. So the darkest of the dark first. <laughs> Start there. I'm gonna throw these in. Don't care if I get out of lines. You know, they're just kind of placeholders. Brush strokes don't matter. All of this again is gonna be covered up. Just put shapes in. And it'll actually work better if you don't have perfect, you know, perfectly manicured shapes when it's all over with. Kind of sharp pointy edges are okay on these rocks. I don't, I don't mind if they're a little jagged looking in little areas. That's a dark area. That's a dark area. I'm going. This is strictly. These are just the darkest spots of the painting. <laughs> don't think about it and don't say mine don't look like that or you know. Got a little spot there. We got some dark. kind of coming up right there where that tree trunk is going to be. That's not the tree trunk. I'm not painting a tree. I'm just painting a placeholder. Just a value. Now 
Now, if you paint perfectly round little bubble shapes in there, they're going to be weird. You have to cover them up. So make some messy looking brush strokes here and there. Um, you know, sharp edges. That's why I say use a flat brush. Makes give, you know, if you give a little character here, it'll make things a little easier going forward. Um, white is dark. Let's see. Just kind of looking at my reference photo here. Do it a little at a time. And it's good. Don't stress about it. <laughs> I'm glad it both looks like a mess. Don't stress over the mess. <laughs> right. But you will see that when you get this part done, just this three color or four color um, mm -hmm. block in, you'll start seeing it shape up already. Other dark areas, there's one here. They got a little bit kind of in here. I'm gonna go a little lighter now. And this is this is gonna be grayish brown, you know, the colors we wanna to work towards. It's kind of the background color here, but maybe a little more leaning towards gray. Stick my stuff over here. And now it's just some of these mid values. Yours is not going to look exactly like mine. Yours, you'll see different things in yours than I see in mine. That's okay. A lot of this bottom stuff, a little, maybe even a little browner. A lot of this bottom water stuff is this. It's okay to mix a little little paint at a time as you go, and, and if it varies a little from here to there, that's fine too. It's almost like a cow painting. It, it is. <laughs> we did the cow that way. We yeah, kind of blocked it in, and then came back and colored it. Yep. Um, it's about that way. But we will paint over this. We kind of tinted that a little bit. Mm -hmm. We will paint over this a little more than we than we tint, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is going to serve as our sketch. Look at that. <laughs> Good job. This is going to be our sketch. I'm just trying to hurry. If you catch yourself going slow on this, then you're messing up. <laughs> you throw this in there. So that is my darker bottom area. I think I had a somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly three shades. You can kind of play it by ear. That one's a little a little lighter but not as light. I don't care that that looks a little blue. I've got a couple of uh, small spots in there. All right. Now coming back down that other side. Yeah, all this over here is grayish, light colored. other side all of this in here is light is mid-tone what about the fact that it's not perfectly smooth and there's some canvas showing through and some texture it's great leave it alone don't don't stress about this for sure All right, that's good for that. Going to come up a little bit, getting a little lighter as we get up into this. And I know it's green and you're painting gray. That's okay. And what shows through your little your little sunshine there that shows through, it will show through a little bit. That's fine. That's what you want. This is just like speed painting right here. Just put as much on there as you can, as quickly as you can. Right, and my, my grayish area comes out to here. Now, as I get out towards this uh, edge of the, the bushes, I know that I'm gonna have to put leaves out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little texture, a little character while I'm blocking in instead of making smooth, loopy 
you know, <laughs> edges. And since I'm up in the trees, I don't care if it looks a little splotchy up there. Let a little bit of that light shine through. That's good. This is a mess. It's fun to make a mess, though. <laughs> I know, you just painted that big glow while I'm covering that <laughs> <Yes>. glow up. <laughs> but believe it or not, you will see that. It yeah. will show through some. And that's okay. That's what we wanted. <coughs> A little bit of this here. Then we're going to go into the lighter, the lighter shade. Now, one of the key uh, elements to this painting that I like is the, the value, <coughs> but also this really bright sunlight coming through this hole up here shining on these trees. So we're going to make sure that that gets as light as it needs to be. And in order for that to be light, this over here needs to be a little dark. A little dark on this over here. Okay. Can you paint messy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you think so? Like Pretty sure. Alright, now for the next one, go a lot lighter. It's not going to be pure white because my brush is not perfectly clean, but that's okay. Just much, much lighter. And this is going to be all these spots down here in my water. I'm going to completely cover the canvas. through here we'll fix all that later I know you're thinking this is crazy it's just a big mess but I really want you to see how it works when you can uh, when you can make a mess and then kind of fix a mess um, by painting fast and loose like this you're gonna get things the, the painting is gonna actually give you things that you didn't know you did you'll have some happy accidents in there all right, that same bright color. Cover up Boyd's oh. thumbprint up there. <laughs> Letting it, that is even better. And there's up in these trees. You don't get stuck with. Don't get stuck in all the different shades. Just kind of big blocks is all we're really looking for. Like I said, we're going to cover most of this up no, no clouds not a one <laughs> right i lose everybody <laughs> no clouds again. gotta have a paint with clouds and then a paint without clouds <laughs> all right okay like an i'm, I'm softening up softening up these edges to make them easier to cover later and you know any little character you get here and there little spots up here and there that's easy to make something out of later mm -hmm. but what you want to be able to do is stand back 50 feet and see a waterfall you know mm -hmm. five feet is a mess ten feet's a mess um, <laughs> at this point i kind of want to go i think some of this is a little dark it's gonna take gray. just a little gray. bit there yeah um some of these rock tops and they want a little lighter. But um, for the most part, that's where I want to be. Y'all think I can make a mess like that? <laughs> You got the rest of your print time. If we can get this far tonight, we'll have a good. This is the under. I printed some more of these because the little one I had had cut off some of the bottom. But this is the whole picture. Um, now this is wider than our. So we got a little bit to play with. Um, if you look at kind of how where this is positioned, it's wider than it is tall. So we're going to kind of imagine some more of this, the top of these trees here, um, and that's where we're going to start. So as I mentioned, this right here last week, this is a sketch. This is just a sketch. Definitely. Now, 
I say that to say if this is um, everything kind of looks where it's supposed to be, it's a sketch, it'll kind of keep you on track where you need to go. If right now it looks weird, I mean, it can, it can be ugly and it can be splotchy. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about it looking finished. But if it looks like you got a rock floating in the sky or your water's <laughs> f flowing sideways, that's, uh, that's my go ahead and fix that because that's a sketch. If your sketch is wrong, your finished product's going to be wrong. Right. But this is all underpainting and it's all sketched, so it is all going to be covered up. And like we usually do, we're going to start at the back and kind of work our way forward. Because I promised Ruth we wouldn't do clouds. No clouds. Hey. <laughs> so we're just going to start up in the sky and kind of make a, make a sky where we don't have one. And that's just going to be... Um, blue. I'm going to put a little touch of brown in it to make it a little bit kind of blue gray. Mm -hmm. and that kills it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the tiniest little amount of this pink if you want to just to brighten up just a hair. Give us this blue violet gray color. I want it fairly light. We're going to have a pretty good bit of really bright green, bright yellow on that side. But what is up here is going to show through as blue. So I don't want to cover up all of my sketch. But I, uh, all of this light area, I'm, I'm still going to cover some of this up. So when it shows through, if it shows through, I'd like to see a little bit of blue sky showing through here and there. So little spots here and there. Now, I don't care that it's kind of splotchy and you can see through it. So we can have some of that. I'm just kind of making some of this blue. Okay. All right, and this is just a little flat brush while I'm in here. It goes to Bob Ross. <laughs> I know that what this sketch ended up looking like is like a tree here and trees there. That's not what I'm going to paint. That's not what's here. Um, and so that's going to look a little different. I know I'm going to have a trees overhanging. But before I mess with this stuff up in the sky, I'm going to uh, go work somewhere else while this dries a little bit. A little bit of that scab is going to show through. Still using this flat brush and I'm still using big, uh, still looking at kind of big sections of where the color is. And so when we look at this, what do you see first? We've got a couple things that stand out. First of all, the bright yellow of this over here. That's going to be kind of foreground of that side. Um, so that'll be kind of last things. Tonight we're trying to get this greenery done. We'll work on rocks and waterfall and everything next week. For now, I know it's dark under here. I got a lot of dark under here, and it's really kind of a dark, it's brown, but it's got a little dark green as well mm -hmm. under there. Got this trunk. This branch in the front is kind of foreground, hanging over. We'll put that in later. We'll do the details of this tree later, but just looking at the big blocks of color right now, what I notice is there's some dark greens here mm -hmm. with a little light green towards the top. There's the really bright stuff on this side and there's kind of mid-tone in the middle. But look how much blue is in this, mm -hmm. in this area. Yep. So let's look at that area real quick while we're still wet even. If I make a little green, and that's yellow and blue, in, in various amounts, makes a really pretty green. Pretty green is bad. That's right. <laughs> but with this, I, I know I want it to be more blue. Because we talked about before, things that are further away get bluer as they go further away and that's because the atmosphere is blue. The sky is blue. Further things get away they get bluer. And it has a lot of white in it so it's really kind of a smoky blue green color like that. You see this color on here at all? Mm -hmm. Maybe at the very top up here. Mm -hmm. You see some oh, of that? Yeah. But it's not really like one big perfect piece that I could kind of call out this is where it's at. It's just kind of some of this back in here has this color. Yeah. You know, the further it goes back, it kind of has a little bit of that lighter color. Okay? Yeah. As you come, as it comes a little closer, it gets a little more green. So, uh, you know, I like to mix colors in a circle like this. Just kind of mix one color and go down. All of our greens, all of our colors are some variation of yellow, blue, and brown. Mm -hmm. And then this, this magenta, the tiniest bit of it, can give it a little bit of a different hue. When we get up in this color where we need this, mm -hmm. this right in here, that'll be where we'll need that. But to keep it far away and distant, I'm going to put a little white with it. So it gives it that kind of distant, smoky color. That's some more of this color. And at this point, I want to try to make 
trees, not really trying to paint exact trees, but trying to suggest, you know, shapes. I don't want perfect yeah. X's, you know. <laughs> but I don't have to paint every, you know, every little branch either. This is just some of that far away stuff. Right Those dark yeah. areas. So we're just gonna layer it. it, it every layer makes the next one look a little better. And you won't see that underpainting at all when we're done. It's gonna be completely covered up. But just going back and forth, I got these colors. I know that my sky up here is only gonna show up a little bit. And these trees I'm painting in now are way off in the distance. All right, these are way back in there. So they're not very crisp. They're not, they're not gonna show up much. They're not gonna have a whole lot of detail to them. And the further they get away, the more blue they get. You get over here. Some of that you can even tell if it's tree or if it's sky. Just a little tiny opening in the sky there. This is again the stuff that's really far away. I want those edges to be really soft. And we'll let that kind of work down into this other area because I, it, when I cover it up, I want it to be able to show through there. Some of these areas that I put some blue, that's where I want that to show through later. So let's let that be step one. All right, sky, really light, soft, bluish, pastel stuff way in the distance that we're going to cover a lot of that up. A lot of trees are going to cover a lot of that. That's just far off distant trees. So let's let that be step one. Take about, start now putting these little sections of trees in. We'll just take a section at a time. Like I said, that, that part right there is probably going to be more like last. Start on these kind of in the hole here in the background. And so first take a look at it. What do we see? Overall, it would fall in the kind of mid, uh, mid range of value. We don't want to get it too light because all this over here has got to be super light against it. Especially right in here, it gets pretty dark. And I want to create that. Um, I got a lot of tree trunks in here. Some light shining through in the background back there. I like that. But overall, you can't really distinguish here's a tree, there's a tree, there's a tree. So don't paint individual trees. Let's make a mass, a mass of trees right there in the middle. And I'm going to push that over to here because it's going to be behind this cluster. But I want it to be you know, behind that and behind this. So it's going to kind of expand over some of that. Okay, here and you know make it look like some trees and there's land behind there too so keeping that in mind we'll start with some dark color i don't care what color it is as long as it's dark let's start with like a black um i don't want it to be pure black i'm gonna put a little yellow in it gives me a kind of a dark greenish color maybe a little bit more towards the brown side and I'm gonna put, make some uh, tree trunks with this, so I want it kind of watery. Got my liner brush. Nice dark, ugly color. And starting about here, I'm gonna put some of these tree trunks in here. Knowing that some of this is gonna be covered up. You know what, before I do that, I might put some land in there first. Let me, let me change gears. <laughs> Everything is just a different shade of green in here. On this one, uh, I can see that the land kind of follows this slope right here. Because I got some painting under there, some texture under there already, it doesn't take much to put a layer of color on top of it and it starts looking, you know, looking like something. Yeah. Um, but what I do see about it is it has some pretty dark areas. Kind of towards the base of it. Pretty dark over in here. Some pretty bright highlight areas across there. That's what I want to get to. Do that with a little 
yellow. Uh, here's going to be the theme on this. If you want something to be bright with paint, paint on this dark background, you got to consider that it looks this color on this white plate, but when I put it up here, it's going to look different. So some of this light kind of coming across the the land down here. I like that. Yeah. Like some of that. Just we get too carried away with it, but there is some light on part of this. The paint underneath is still wet, so it's showing up too well, but just a little bit peeking through here and there. I think this gives me a little land to start with. So then I'm going to go back to where I was. I used up some of my other batch of that dark, dark color with a lot of water in it. So now I can put some of these tree trunks kind of in front of that. That's what I wanted to do. Because mm -hmm. the bottoms of these, some of them are going to show. Some of them won't be covered up. Don't think too much about it. Some here and there. There are the rules. The rules with trees. They have to get smaller as they go up. <laughs> Well, the bottom, some of it will be covered. If, if you want it to be covered, you can cover it. Everybody doesn't have to be exactly the same either. We just we need some distant stuff here. It's not on the top of this yet because all that's going to be kind of covered up. Put a bunch of little things in here. Like I said, it's going to come over that way and it's going to go over this way. That if any of this shows through. At the end, it'll look right. I've probably got way too much of this already. But. So then I'm going to go to my uh, fan brush. If you don't have this exact fan brush, this is one of the few brushes that I'll say, go get one. And sometimes when I'm, it, uh, these are both identical, they're number ones. Soft bristle uh, fan brush. Um, this is what I use a lot for trees. The older it is and the more chewed up it is, the better it works. Because you gotta get it to separate. So, to make this cluster of trees in the back. Now I want my paint to be a little creamier. I wanted it watery for these for these stalks. That one's getting away from me. But I'm gonna paint over that anyway, so that don't even matter. Alright. And again, we'll start with some mixture of yellow and blue to make green and then brown to make it not pretty. Uh, we don't want it to be too pretty. Now I know I got a couple shades there. I'm going to start with this darker shade I think. So I'll separate a little bit. So there's a, a good balance of how much water you need to make that work. You kind of have to play with it if you're not used to doing that. When you said that was a soft bristle. This real soft, soft yeah. This is the, okay. the soft one. This is called Taclon. It's really mm -hmm. soft bristle. It's imitation yeah. squirrel hair, is what it is. Imitation squirrel. Imitation squirrel. Mm -hmm. If you got some real squirrel, use that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. These are kind of new. I want this. Um, I want this light stuff really to be star of the show back here. But in order for that to be light, this needs yeah. to be dark behind it. So while my brush is not separated really good and I just need blocks of dark, because I don't like the way the color looks up there quite as much as I did with it down here. Brown it up a little bit. Brown it up a good bit. Let's see what that looks like. But you can start an area with it thick like this. And just kind of blob the paint on and as the paint runs out of the brush yeah. as it runs out then it, the ends will separate for you a little bit better and then you can kind of get those good looking edges I need more water for that to work right when the brush is at the right point where they're separated real good you can just kind of make those edges yeah. like that look like mm -hmm. trees that's what i want so we'll come on up yeah now start with these dark ones so I'm kind of going in and twisting and dancing around like that. Put this dark light area that's going to come in here. So 
get your pants and brush yourself. Right. But now that I've got a blob of paint there, I can keep going back and getting some of it and, and using it, you know, kind of. Don't think about it too much, just, you know, throw that in there. As I come back over here, it gets a little lighter. Um, some yellow in there. Again, don't don't try to make pretty pretty green <laughs> is your enemy. Green is a hard color to work, and if it because it gets too too pretty too quick. Really focusing on making this top edge. Okay, yeah. that got some yellow. Making this top edge look more like a tree. Yeah. Keeping that side dark. As this dries, it'll show up a little better. Um, then I may. I'm probably going to have to go over it again with another coat of something to make the, make the colors more distinguished. And the other trick, you all know this trick by now, that I like to do is while it's wet, you can come in there and put a couple of scrapes in there. It eventually looks like limbs and things later on. And that's, that's very quick trees right there. I'll come back over that with my, as I need to. let those kind of peek through that way. Going down a little with my stuff here. Some of that along. So everybody's may be a little different, but what we got to get to is this uh, this section, this middle section right here of background trees. We got to get some color on those, get them in there. Um, because next step is we're going to do this side coming in over it, and then we're going to do that side coming in over top of it. So it's nice and dark over here, lighter over here. The sunlight is coming through behind and across that. It's going to hit this this area here. So got a little patches in the bottom. Got you know the ground. We can we can work on that as we go. Some bled into my waterfall a little bit. But that's okay. Uh, but let's get that far. That's the next step. That should be about 30 minutes. Everybody should be able to do that. We've got, and it, 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 we always can go back and touch things up. There's some things in here I want to fix on the ground. I'll come back and do that later when I have extra time. But we've got this background area in there now. Now we've got to put this foreground closer area here, all these trees here, and then this group over here with the bright yellows and greens. Mm -hmm. These are going to be the most important. That's, that's a key part of this painting. And in order to get that yellow and that green to be as bright as we need it to be, uh, here's what we're going to do first. And now, I warn you, if this is going to look weird, and you're going to see it, and you're going to go, mine looks weird, but it's because it looks weird. <laughs> I'm going to paint it first wow. straight gesso. Yeah, that so sense. here's the thing. I just want to get the shapes of this mass of trees, right? Not painting individual trees. Right. Just the shapes of this mass of trees. And don't worry about this cluster because they're not connected to that. They're up here. Those are, you know, much further back. Just going to get some paint off of brush. This first one, uh, you know, the first area, I'm just going to kind of have a, a section that comes out like this. It goes all the way to the top of the canvas. <laughs> See how ugly that is? Pure white. Now, I'm not making it solid for a reason. I'm leaving some holes there. Because that's going to make it, when we do cover it up, it's going to make it work better. Out here, these these limbs, I kind of want to control the very edges of them. I want those little tiny, delicate edges. And my limbs are all kind of sticking out like this. Don't make a perfectly pruned tree. Bob's mad, you know. <laughs> Over there keeps falling, huh? Bob's throwing stuff away. <laughs> See how weird that white looks? And even the uh, the grass down here. All of this stuff that's going to be really bright white over here, bright yellow. Yeah. Going to go ahead and just make it that's your dog woods. light. Dog woods. It ain't going to stay white, so don't worry about it. 
Yeah, as I get in here, I'm just going to kind of fill in a little. I don't want any hard lines. Yeah. So those lines up there are kind of hard, so I'm just going to, while my brush is kind of clean, um, smear that around a little, soften those lines. Same fan brush. Fan brush, yeah. Now I really am focusing just on having some fairly clean, you know, individual edges here like this. And what time of year would you say this picture is? Fall. Fall? Springtime. I don't know, you got this tree over here that's got a little red in it. Yeah. But all that bright yellow green makes me think spring. Yeah. Because all these leaves are going to fall off. Maybe yeah, those are, those are not quite uh, they're gonna stop up my regrown yard yet. <laughs> yeah. So if you notice, and as you're out riding around, some of you, we've talked about this before, when you notice trees, the way they grow at different times of the year, in the spring, this time of year, when the leaves are really bright green and really small little buds, all of the limbs grow upward, they'll grow towards the sky. Every tree will have kind of upward limbs going out. As it gets towards summer and they get heavier, your limbs will kind of sag a little bit. And then, uh, and of course, the leaves fall and then those upward, upward facing limbs. So I want a lot of these really bright, really clean, wispy, detailed limbs. little edges. Yeah. Some that stick out away from everything, you know Smiley what I mean? The brush will do that for you. We're going to come back and colorize that. You don't take it all the way to the end of the canvas? Um, you can. All that's going to be a little darker over there, so I'm not really worried about taking it to the end. I really just okay. don't want a hard line. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to move to the other side. This back, this side over here, um, we do have this overhanging limb here that we're going to put on, not this week. We'll put that when we do the rocks and stuff. We'll put the rocks underneath it. And so all of this in front of the rocks can, and this up here can be next week. So for now, um, base color in there, mm -hmm. it's kind of, I don't want it to be the same as that color. It's a little lighter in the top at least, kind of up here, yeah. maybe even lighter than that. And I've got to play with it. Um, but it's kind of scattered in there. Yeah. Not all solid like that. Yeah. A couple of bright spots here and there. I've got a little bit of that sky showing through. I'll try to leave a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. As it comes out though, it gets a little darker. Give it a little. The main thing is to try to let have some variation of the colors mm -hmm. so you don't so this doesn't just blend with that. I want this to distinctly be something that's in front of mm -hmm that other area. So that's a little too green. I think I'll put a little bit of my, my red in there. Try to get a little different shade. Red and green are Y'all don't know that when you're making shadows, whatever color you're making a shadow of, if you add its opposite color, like if a color wheel, the color directly across is the opposite. If you add the opposite color, you get the shadow color. So red and green being opposites, if you want to make a shadow color for green, put a little red in it. And put it in there. Got a little dark. Just trying to get a little different color than what's there. And that's almost the exact color that's there. <laughs> Let's see, what if we go a little bluer? Yeah, that's better. Bluer. And it's darker towards the base of the you know, yeah. bush, bushes there. As it comes up, it gets a little lighter. Just gotta throw some color in there first and then I'll make it look good. Hopefully. Keep it dark out here. As it gets out here, it definitely needs to be a little lighter than what's behind it so it can stand off. We can be a little bit more of that yellow up there. Oh, sorry. Yellow. gets towards the top. I do want to keep this lighter, this lighter color here. By working the paint a little bit thicker like this and creamier, you can get a little more time to, to work it. Um, but I, I want to make 
a pretty defined edge to that. And when I get ready for that, that's when I want to get the paint a little thinner, get my bristles to separate as much as I can. Come on, separate. And then just kind of dance around on that edge. My shapes there. So that gives me a yeah. pretty distinct edge of where these trees start and those stop. Yeah. Because this paint's still wet, the more I kind of go over top of it, it's going <coughs> to pick up all those other colors. And it's going to blend together. It's going to blend with what's behind it. Ain't left handed for a while. <laughs> That's one way to keep it random. <laughs> I'm falling off. <laughs> that little spot of sky showing through there, I like that. I can keep it. But you can always come back and put that in too. detail some of that when we put the rocks and such in canvas here okay the main thing I wanted was to have a clean edge here and I don't think I got it perfectly clean I may have so, to come up with a oh no you're fine yeah I'm gonna touch that up just a hair give a little more of a distinct edge there all right and as before uh, going to come back and put some trunks in there. We've got a couple of thicker trunks, but while it's wet, it's always a good idea just to put a couple little things in there. Dripping in there too good. Yeah, that these little things make it look like you spent some time on it, and because of the underpainting, it shows through in different colors. It really can look good. So we're going to get that in. Also, last thing we'll do tonight, well, last thing we're gonna do on this side for now is put that dark trunk back in. I don't want it to be completely uncovered by limbs. So I'll come back and put some limbs on top of it in spots. So make sure you can see that one. Um, and if you have any others you wanna throw in, now it's time to put them in and then go back and kind of put a couple of leaves here and there on them. Back, come back with the fan brush and do some more you know, smaller stuff. Need a liner brush? Yeah, liner brush, I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's so wet, the paint's so wet, it's not showing up really good. If the paint is thick like that, you can use thinner paint, it usually shows up, we'll, we'll go over it pretty easily. Thin over thick. But again, not trying to paint any detailed individual stuff, just a, a mass of trees. Oh yeah. They should have slipped in here then. I will go back and do a couple more little layer details, a couple more limbs, limbs here and there, and a couple more stalks just to layer them to make them look more dense. But overall, this side is lighter. But we are going to come back and put the stuff in the foreground and maybe some of this redder, redder leaves on top of that, some limbs and things over that later. But for now, this mass of trees uh, should stand out from that mass. Mm -hmm. And then over here, it looks like Christmas. We're going to come back to that in a minute. So let's get that far. And the last thing we'll do is we'll color this before we leave. I, I went back and did a little bit more with just, a deep, just the uh, liner brush and made a couple of little extra crisp leaves you know here and there just on the edges and did a little bit over here too just to kind of clean up those inside edges um, and you know on this side did some layers of leaves you know limbs leaves limbs just kind of kept doing layers of that I'm still gonna work on this middle part a little bit more later but uh, I'm gonna show you now how to color this and we can finish with this tonight stay as long as you want or you can start with this next week um, but this mass of trees over here we're gonna kind of treat it the same way we treated this, but I, I got this color. So we don't go outside of our regular colors very often, but this is a color that's you can't really make with the mm -hmm. colors we have. It's really, really bright. And the, what I want to do with it is put it over top of my white and put a little water in it because it is see-through. 
these lighter colors are very transparent, but that's good. That's what I want. <coughs> it's going to show up really bright on this on this white. And I don't have to stay exactly on my my marks because the paint is see through, and it's going to it's going to look different over the white than it looks over the dark. It's going to make it look a lot more detailed on those edges. See how bright that is? Mm -hmm. Now I only want it this bright <clears throat> kind of right out on the edges. And see how when it goes outside of the white it looks like it's glowing? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't show up as bright outside of the white. With the, with the dark underneath. That's almost magic how that works. This section here is super bright, and so are these grasses kind of right in here. I'll let some of that, I'll come back and touch some of that up later. <clears throat> rocks too much. Some of that really bright stuff. Now, as I go towards the top, I'll put a little more yellow in it. It's not as dark behind there, and so it doesn't need to be as dark. It doesn't need to be as bright. It could be more yellow, and I like just a variety of just different colors. Make it look like a little different, a little different tree up here. It's not different enough. More yellow. I'm gonna put a touch of brown in it. A lot more yellow than what's behind. Now you didn't mix that with your green, did you? It had a little yes. bit in my. I had a little in my brush. Okay. But I'm trying to get more towards the, the yellow. That's more like it. Come out on the edges. <coughs> and again, if you go past uh, the edge of it, it just kind of looks like it's glowing a little bit. That's okay. work this while it's still wet and go into <coughs> a more more of the green that we've been working with. Get a good darker color here. Work into that yellow. It is going to have this darker color. Back on this side. Just kind of putting some paint on here right now and then I'm going to work on kind of blending those together. With the paint still being wet, this is the benefit of working quickly. I can uh, kind of blend that on the canvas, let those work together. Yeah, it sure, it will. Go a little bigger. As long as you do it fast and don't think about it too much. <laughs> I make sad little trees. Don't think about it too much. Yeah. Back here. It's a lime. And just like it's on this so side, it starts with a, bright bright yellow, just like on this side, it starts with a mass of colors, and then you put some more shapes and some more, you know, detail in it. Mm -hmm. Kind of coming into that bright color here to get the color of this tree. Just want to kind of blend that mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. See how bright that tree gets though on that edge. That's what I want. I want a nice bright edge. And I may come back once this is, once I do the next layer, I may come back and put a another little edge in there that's, that's good and bright like that. Um, I, I don't really like the way that, I, I'm going to have to separate this. I do want to have kind of two separate things here. Like two different trees. Like two separate trees, yeah. But I'm going to have to wait till that dries to do that real good. But we'll start there next week. And if you haven't done this part, you'll have time to do this, and then we'll work on defining this side a little bit better. But I just wanted to show you how, how that bright color is going to look and when it's all in there. Room. Yeah, you can use that. Mm -hmm. Continue this this right side right here and get that finish. And I worked a little bit after we <clears throat> after we stopped last time and I did a little bit of the next step. And some of you have already done this. Um, once you get that initial block in of colors in, 
Um, and, and try to think of it as a cluster of trees. I'm, I'm kind of working on like one here, one over here, a little more treetop there, treetop there. Um, but put some of these uh, trunks in. That's that's the next layer, and then another layer of green on top. And so now, and you can do as many of that as you need. I mean, it's it's always better to build it in layers like that than to try to do it all at once. Do a layer, dry it, do the next layer. But keep it in mind the whole time that what we're trying to create here is the sun shining in from behind this cluster of trees and hitting these on this side. And so in order for that to work, it's got to be dark over here. Mm -hmm. It's got to be dark back there. Mm -hmm. And then that light has to hit here. And it looks weird to start with. When we get down into the water, our water is going to be really bright in here and not as bright over here. Um, but I do need to darken the bottom areas here. And when you're painting trees, um, it's, it's good to think about individual shapes of, you know, clusters of limbs and things. So I'm going to start with some dark. Um, I don't say black, I just say dark. It's just a dark <laughs> color. I want to make a as close as I can to black and just add a little touch of that yellow with it. It's about the darkest green you can get. Maybe just a hair lighter. So I need to keep that edge really bright and I need a smooth transition. I don't want really hard. I don't want to make it dark all the way up to that line and just have a smooth, you know, just have a bright edge. Um, but definitely at the bottom of the trees down here, down in the, the shadowing area here, all of this would kind of be in shadow. So it's not a new tree that I'm painting in front of this, it's just... Not worried about my trunks matching up with the, the stuff up top. It, like I said, it's a mass of trees. Mm -hmm. Now see how I've got a, a little bit of a tree that kind of showed up right there. I'm not sure if I did that on purpose or not, <laughs> but it's working. <laughs> it's there. I'm gonna come in here with a little dark. Yeah. And let Brian that separate out even more. What? Brian said he ain't gonna do it that way. <laughs> However he wants. But look at the on the picture. You can see that this side it's pretty bright all the way across. But it's it's a pretty good bit darker over here on this side. Mm -hmm. And this tree too has its own kind of dark area. Yeah. And now I lost my little edges that came out, but that's okay. I'm gonna come back and put those in in a minute mm -hmm. underneath. Then I come back and put some more light stuff. So that's what I mean by doing it in layers. Yeah. I need to darken in here some. And I'll come back again and separate some of that. Do a layer and see how it, how it looks and go from there. Alright. The far right has a lot more shadow to it. It's, all of that's kind of in shadow all the way up. But the same way you can paint bright colored, you know, limb, leaf edges, you can do some of that with the dark too, and it, it works the same. You get a little mm -hmm. shadow, shadow limb in there. If I leave some of those, put a little bit here. Okay. And each step along the way, if you're thinking of working in layers, each step along the way, you do a little bit of each. You do a little bit of uh, leaves, some limbs. <laughs> and then I'll come back with my tree trunks. Brian's a professional. These tree trunks that get kind of cloudy in here, it uh, is good sometimes to just kind of solidify them in parts, in pieces. So I pull a piece of it here, piece of it there. That gives the illusion that you know someone's hiding behind the leaves. Little things like this make a big difference at the end. 
this is kind of the, the sort of detailing that we do at the very end but this is the end of this section we're going to move on from this and not come back to it you're going <laughs> to be what I hope for you. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> I hope that we can move on from this <laughs> I know some people right at the end of the painting they'll come back and do a little bit more of that. <laughs> yeah. At the very end it's it's permissible. <laughs> what a, what you don't want to do is obsess about it and not move on to the rest of the painting and then get behind on everything else. Right. Also my uh my grass is in the front there that are weird looking. Uh -huh. Need a little dark in there too. Um, this is the wrong brush for it, but I think it'll be okay. I just want to color those a little bit, especially towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. I like the bright stuff on the very edge, but yeah. at the middle here, I want it to be a good bit, <coughs> good bit darker down here in the shadow. I'll come back and <coughs> okay. Um, while we're here, let's see if I can get a room on my plate. And make, a, <coughs> make a light color here. You can do it. Since I lost all my light stuff. Not that light. I still don't like this fan brush. It still ain't broke in good yet. <laughs> it's not broke yet. And just more of that little. Yeah. Little ledge there. I'm not trying to paint a whole tree in front of another tree. Just that's a you know a limb or a mm -hmm. little part that shows up because the sunlight hit it. When you do end up painting individual lit trees, Mary right, it becomes real hard to make that look real. Now you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I sent some rebellion amongst some of these kids. Right. Right. Might have been helpful in the front end. <laughs> <laughs> he probably said it. I'm just kidding. I don't think you did. That's why Brian ain't paying no attention. He's back there painting away. I don't know what to do. Anytime you're, uh, anytime you're making these. In the shadow, but they're lighter. You know, not they're not the direct sunlight, which is what I'm working with here. I put a little white in that, so it one it'll cover up the darker mm -hmm. stuff and actually show up. But it gives it that kind of cooler, that cooler look, that bluer, mm -hmm. a little bit cooler, like it's in the shadows. Yeah. So that's about as much as I want to do to that. I'm, Pretty happy with that. I, I don't like how I ended up with a perfect, like I said, I didn't want to do, so I'm going to work on that a little bit. Try not to <laughs> try and break that up just a hair. We'll pour. Do that with my. That clean, light dark transition. Break, break this area up a little bit, probably. Yeah. That's all pretty good, I think. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> About the color of your shirt, boy. That's better, I think. That's yes. a little better, I believe. Yeah. Shadowy there. Now, the parts that sell this is one, the really bright stuff on the grass yeah. coming across yeah. here. Yeah. That bright edge and a little bit clipping the edge of this tree as it comes across. Yeah. If I get crazy at the end, I might even want to put a couple of streaks of sunlight, sunlight mm -hmm. across there. Oh, but yeah. mm -hmm. um, that's that side. We're going to. I may come back and do a little more. Sitting back and looking at it, I think I may need to be a little darker there. I may play with it a little bit more. But let's completely finish this side in maybe the next 20 minutes. So next steps on this, uh, on these rocks. You can only see some of the, you know, rocks behind here. Because we got these leaves that are coming and these limbs that are going in front of that. We're going to put a lot of that in. I'm going to put some of this. I've got some vermilion out. We'll put some of this orange on here on this side. Um, but for now, we got to get this stuff underneath. Mm -hmm. And really want to focus on the part up here first, which you really can't tell much about it. 
The main thing for us is though is that we want to have this limb coming in front of it. Yes, yeah, so we need to And it's dark. pretty green, so it needs to be pretty dark behind there. Yeah. But we do got some individual rocks and some cliffs. <laughs> Yeah. And the key to these to these rocks is these edges look sharp, right? They look like they could cut you. Mm -hmm. If you go painting potatoes, <laughs> it's going to look different. You know, you go up here, everybody wants to paint round, round rocks. Try to get, and that's why I got my flat brush. Yeah. And I got a dagger brush, but I think the flat brush is going to mm -hmm. serve me better. You know, flat edges on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And these cracks. And that, see how, the, see how it's kind of got that washy texture? Mm -hmm down the rock face there we'll put some of that in so to start with um don't worry about a sketch you know what yours looks like um there we go i know that i'm gonna have you know the big rocks down here and i know that i have about right here a little bit of a line that goes goes down there it actually comes up and comes straighter here so I got little rocks and things up in there and then this is kind of my straight down edge here um, that's about all the sketch you need but the big shapes that we're getting we've got kind of a an angle <laughs> that makes that draws you into the middle here this side kind of has an angle that draws you into the middle here so it's obviously flowing back you know so we, we, your visual is to flow through the center of the painting so all of these lines tr i'm going to try not to have anything that fights against that flow you know yeah. so starting with the flat brush <laughs> and the color is not much different than we did our our sketch in yeah. but i know that my darks need to be pretty dark I'm gonna start by just making some black. This is, you know, 50-50 usually. Blue and brown. Start with some dark. There's no white in this, and there's not a whole lot of water in it either. I'm gonna put some of, sort of the way we did our sketch here, but with a little more detail. I'll put some of these sharp edges in here. Now I have some kind of shadowy areas here with well, this part will be a little bit visual we'll but you got a lot of little kind of rocks that just have a shadow underneath them back here was pretty dark by doing angle, different angles with a flat brush, it kind of creates those those shapes for you. Let that kind of be a shape there. Bring that one down. I know it's a lot darker. I don't know if that's a rock or just a really dark area right in here. And right in here. This is almost like the sketch we did before. All of this under here is pretty dark. I want all of my strokes on this flat surface here to be up and down, you know, be mm -hmm. vertical. It's like a cliff area. Yeah, it is it is kind of a straight down cliff. Mm -hmm. That little triangle there looks weird. I think I'm gonna leave that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll come back and put some cracks and things in there, but a couple of deep, deep cuts in it, you know, that have a, a nice shadow are good. The key to making it look like rocks is just to have some contrast, dark areas, light areas. Now, as I move out, Towards the lighter it browner. Gray. Overall it gets it looks like it's getting darker kind of in this area than over on that side. So I'm gonna come back with my, my next value here. In those areas. At some point, I'm gonna just quit looking at this picture and just make it my own. I'm just trying to get the major shapes right.
there's not a whole lot of sunlight hitting these uh, tops of these rocks. But each time I make a, a lighter shade, I'm gonna just go a little further over on my palette mm -hmm. so I can come back to those darker ones when needed. But there are some surface areas here that look like they are standing out of them. Try hard not to make them all <laughs> exactly the shape of my brush. Flat brush is definitely your friend in this this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So keeping the rocks up on the surface kind of nice and flat is the key. That's the top edge kind of a rock. That's kind of a top mm -hmm. edge. Um, mm -hmm. I want to show you one more thing before I lose you. We um edge on that. When it comes to making this surface look streaky and runny, some of you may have done that. We've you know we've done this before. We do kind of a wash on there. Mm -hmm. Um I'm gonna see if I can make it work without drying it. We want to build this up in layers. Put a layer down, dry it, put another layer on top of it, dry it, another layer on top of it. So what, yeah, if you hit that with a dryer just real quick. Get my shapes before I get into doing too much texture. So get your shapes, highlights, dark areas first. When you get ready to start doing surface texture, if you make a thin, not, not liquid, but a thinner paint, you can kind of put it in here around the top edge of where you want that to be, where you want that to come from. And then here's the trick. I'm gonna use that one to place that paint. Come back with some water. Got a clean fan brush here with some water. Back with a little water and just let it kind of run down that. I don't care that it's running down in my in my water because I'm gonna redo that anyway. I'm gonna have to paint that later anyway. If you put enough water in it, kind of let it run, it'll make a lot of interesting stuff for you and that's it's a thin it's a real thin layer and when it dries you barely be able to see it but if you do you know several layers of that um, it'll look real good see that's how I want to do I want to first create all my shapes and then I'm going to make it even look more flat. By doing this water drippage too, it also brings the lines perfectly straight down and that'll make it look more flat. So the shape and then texture and just keep building that texture of these rocks. Keep it dark because we are going to have a limb coming out in front of this. Mainly this front edge has got to look better because it's, it's going to be exposed a little more. Right. And I got to do something with all this because it don't make sense. So I'm going to make some rocks out of that or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's work on that chunk of land right there. Now. Got a few more, a few more steps tonight. I hope we can get, um, like I said, about 80 to 90 percent done with this one, so we can finish it next week and have some time to do some details and things. What's left? Hopefully, if you're at this point, um, we've kind of finished this area in here, and even the trees at the top are pretty much finished. But what we're trying to achieve is to have the sunlight come from behind. These, this cluster of trees, it's hitting these trees, and it's also coming across this here. Mm -hmm. So, like we did with the rocks over here, we're going to do with the same with the rocks on the right. So the first part is going to be just working on rocks, but these are going to have a lot more light on top of them. And I'm telling you, you will be happier if you'll use a flat brush on these rocks mm -hmm. and let it do some of the work for you for making some of the sharp edges uh, and shapes to the rocks. And you kind of really got to be able to look at what you have and see what it gives you. Um, but we're over here, our lightest values are probably on a scale of one to a hundred. Our lightest here are probably in the 35 to 40 range. You know, right. we're over here, we're going to get pretty bright with these uh, rocks, but they're dark right now. So you don't want to go straight from black to white. You know, you got to have some colors in between. 
And so these all look really gray and there's a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, but when the light hits them, they're gonna have a little more color to them. So I'm gonna go a little bit more brown and put a little bit of yellow in that for the very tops. And you just kinda gotta build, you kinda build these values on each rock a little at a time. But you'll find that it's easier if you don't look, don't work on one rock at a time. Kind of do a, a cluster at a time. Always thinking about where the sun's coming from. So these down here are going to have, you know, light side. And I'm just shaping them as I go. Where the light's going to hit the top edge. This is not as light as they're going to get. This is just a blueprint to what's going to get lighter and lighter. Some shapes to it. See, so using that flat brush though gives you some, some good shapes, some good edges. You don't really have to. There's not really a pattern to it. You just kind of got to see what it gives you. The first thing I'm going to do is make the, like I said, the blueprint. Just kind of that first color. Then we'll come back and lighten just a little. And if you work a lot of these and then come back, they'll be a little more dry. Then you can come up to the parts that would be a little bit more highlighted. Highlight some more. These are this is a good opportunity to do some finger paint. Yeah, areas that are even brighter, and I won't do all of them. That's that's the variety that makes it look real. And then lighter and lighter and lighter. So it's you start big, you do a great a lighter area that's a little smaller, and even lighter area that's smaller, and even lighter area that's smaller, and you're gradually moving up towards the the brightest sunlit part. When we get to the very top edges of these rocks, I don't want them to be the color of the water, which of course we haven't done the water yet, but these up here are going to be super bright. They're going to have a lot of sunlight on this top edge. Way up here at the very top, it's catching a lot of light. Seeing that already? That's the idea. We want this light to come across from there. We're going to have bright water and the, the white in the water. If you look at how, the, how it is in the picture, mm -hmm. see how many shades of yeah. <coughs> super white over here, but this is really blue yeah. back in the corner. So the water is going to be super bright over here. The reflections in the water are going to be bright. But we really want to focus on this group of rocks catching some light. Mm -hmm. These right here are going to have a lot of, a lot of light to the top of them. that a little bit to get it to look like I want it. But not so much over here though. So that's one thing. I'm going to spend some time working on these rocks. We're going to spend probably about 30 minutes finishing these rocks. These first, uh, these front rocks here also, this is going to catch a lot of sunlight up front here. Particularly fond of the shape of this rock. I'm going to have to work on that a little. <laughs> These in here are going to catch a good bit of light. <coughs> the line, though, is kind of, if there's a line, sort of a diagonal from here. Really light stuff, not so light stuff. <coughs> Let's work that. Let's finish these rocks. I'm going to do some more detail to these down here just to finish them out. They're not as bright, but I'm going to finish them out. And let's just call our rocks 100% before we move to the, the next step. We're not ready to do water yet. We're going to do the... Uh, the, the color, the reflections under the water, it'd probably be next week before we actually do the, the actual water. But if you look, you got all this white stuff down here in the water, all this texture down here, but you can see underneath it all the reflections of what's above. Mm -hmm. So we got to put all that under color in real quick. No, and it's really, <laughs> this is something that's going to be covered up. So it's really, what's above there is if you, if you were to put a mirror right here where the water starts what would re what would it be reflecting and it doesn't have to be exact but I'm gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a really dark on this side I'm gonna start it would start with reflecting some of these rocks right here just some just some of this lighter stuff here but on that side, you're mostly going to have dark, 
dark reflections. And this water overall is kind of brown. Messed up my uh, thing there. Main thing here is I want to make my final brush strokes, I want them to be kind of horizontal like this if they're already. Okay. If that makes sense. I'm kind of jagged, scrubbing that in. This is my little flat brush again. Maybe at the very, maybe at the very top edge here, I can see a little bit of green. Maybe not that green. <laughs> Hard lines, we're definitely not painting trees down here. <laughs> Use a lot of water. In the middle, um, you've got a green shade. Put a lot of water in that. Color this up here and get some of the white a little bit. That's okay. So I'm going to put a lot more, a lot more white on here. Scrub out the edges. Don't, don't want any hard lines anywhere. Um, biggest thing is going to be this brighter, brighter color here, and I'm not going to get the bright green to try to match it exactly. I'm just going to go with some, some green, dirty it up a little. It's kind of bright, right in there. A lot of water. Put a little paint on there and push it around. This is the reflection of that super bright tree right above it going into the darker stuff to the right and because it's so dark and brown underneath I can get some of this green in here and it's not gonna it's not gonna look too weird brown down there. is that weird that we're painting the water green a little bit no because when you have algae in the water it is green. <laughs> well, water, when you paint water, you don't really paint the water. You paint what it's reflecting. Water is clear. So we're going to paint the stuff there. Now, I did put a couple of rocks down here because I knew my water edge was going to come over that. Those are kind of reflections of those rocks. I had done that before. So just a base color of some of your, your greens with some of the brightest, with some of the brightest kind of right in this area. And we're going to paint over all of this. So that's one thing. And we'll let that dry. Okay. Then, and this is optional, okay? Yeah, optional. I want you to do this, but you can do as little or as much as you want here. There are some limbs and things kind of overhanging over here. Like those, I'm going to try to put some of that in, but I'm not really going to try to do it exactly like the picture. I'm just going to try to create my own. And I don't want to get too carried away with it, but I think it'll help because there's so many vertical lines here it'll help to have something horizontal coming over top of that um, if you're not comfortable painting limbs you can do as few or as much of this as you want this is my little liner brush make sure you get plenty of water in it these kind of come in from the side kind of look for opportunities to cross over some of the lines you have Happy little accident. <laughs> well, it was painting limbs, so it kind of just went right in there with it. That's all good. Now I am going to put some leaves and things on this. So I'm thinking about where I want that to go. This is all about contrast. It's about bringing that, um, bringing that uh, a little more forward, pushing all of that back and bringing this forward. And so the dark stuff behind there is going to give me a good place to do to have mm -hmm. contrast so and I'll put my little leaves on there I want to think about that um, so I've got a few bigger ones in there then you want to come back and kind of roll the brush and put a few you know no. smaller ones everything doesn't even have to connect but you can uh, this kind of informs you to where to put your where to put your leaves mm -hmm. and don't don't make them uniform make them cross over and intertangle Try to avoid doing swoopy, curly, curvy 
what? branches. You want hard, kind of jagged edges. It helps to kind of roll the roll the brush as you go. Um, and I, I don't want to leave this as a skeleton, you know, these branches. But I'm just putting those there so my leaves will have a place to go. Because I don't want to use a fan brush and put a ton of leaves on here. I'm going to actually kind of paint individual leaves. That's why I said this is kind of optional, as little or as much as you want to do. Um, we are still in the shadow side over here, but this is a lot closer to us. Mm -hmm. So you're able to see it a little more. You have to go with a lighter color to cover that dark mm -hmm. background. So you notice when I'm doing these leaves, a lot of the end of the branches kind of go upward. That's that's intentional. This is kind of, it looks to me like early summer, maybe spring, when the leaves are kind of growing upward. Um, I may do a, some of this with a smaller flat brush, but the uh, liner brush works good too, to just do some individual leaves. And it, I don't think you have to cover every branch. They obviously don't have to touch each other. They don't have to have any kind of shape to them. The worst thing you can do is make them uniform and make them all the same size and make them all perfectly avoiding each other, the same space between each one and all that. You want to have, um, so who is he talking you know. To? <laughs> that would be Bridget if she was here. Oh, that's not called name. No. <laughs> but yes, you're right. <laughs> By keeping these uh, kind of following the limbs and you can kind of let the leaves go in that direction if that makes any sense kind of make them go the direction of the limb but I'm not really putting them I'm not really connecting each leaf to a branch you know if that that's not really something you have to do so you're not gonna put any more color on the branches <coughs> I may come back and highlight some branches to get them to show on the darker areas and then definitely gonna have some brighter when you're doing these little leaves like this, you want to do some that stand out more than the others. A couple of really brighter things. The fact that there's limbs that are visible somewhere, it doesn't matter where you put these leaves. Really looking more for where to where there's contrast. There's real dark areas where I can put some really light, you know, little stuff. You can do these with a really small, like a, they're almost like a, a comma, like painting a little comma shape. It's, you, you really only get in trouble when you try to make them look like leaves. <laughs> try to make them look, try to make them perfect. And if you're going to have some bright ones in the light areas, you got to have some darker ones too. That just makes it look right. Uh, I'm going to play with this a lot and, and, and get this, you know, how I like it. These are not completely covered in leaves. These are kind of, kind of sparse with how many leaves are on there. But you'll be able to tell that it is a branch coming out. And if you do have lighter colored ones, kind of keep them to the top and the darker ones to the bottom. Um, I may... Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna come back and work on that a little more. Some highlights on the li limbs and some some highlights in the leaves and things. But this is just as little or as much of this as you want to do. Um, and I'm not gonna do any of that on the other side. It's just on this side. Mm -hmm. But also, um, you notice there's some red in here. This is an opportunity if you want to put a little red in this as well. Um, this you could get a little vermilion and mix it with this green to get that red color. But I like the little leaves laying on the rocks down there too. So I may. Um, while I got my liner brush out, let me come back and get a good dark brown color. And it takes again a couple sh couple shades of that too, and you know, put a couple of these little leaves and things down in here. Mm -hmm. Not too much, just this is kind of detailed stuff, but yeah, a little bit goes a long way down here mm -hmm. for sure. So let's get that done. If you want to do leaves, limbs, definitely get your water colored. And we'll work on that limb. What we got left, what we got left to do is the water. We pretty much <laughs> we're pretty much done with uh with everything but the water. You're bad. You should be anyway. You're bad. You're bad. So here's the steps, the phases. If you notice how this water 
it, it's not just all one sh one flat you know waterfall you've got it come down and then it comes forward and then goes down again so we got to create those steps and they're different levels different places in the rocks biggest thing is it's got to look natural and since everybody's is different you just need to see where yours is and see where the water can flow but at the end of it don't have it to where everything falls down and goes into the flat water you want to have some stages where things come forward and the way we create that is with these really light areas on the shelf you know on the flat part of the water so if you notice this water is really bright over here but it's really blue over here kind of blue gray same with the ripples they're kind of blue gray over here the way we're going to achieve that is in three steps first we're going to paint behind the water you know in mine we've got I've got just a lot of white space. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put some shadowing behind there where the rocks mm -hmm. would show through where the water falls over it. Then we'll put all the water fall and ripples and splashes in in a mid white, a dirty white, um, mid level. Then when that's dry, we'll come back and tint part of it darker but just by washing over it with a darker color and then highlight the bright white stuff. So your first white, make sure you leave some room to brighten it. Make, yeah. it, make it less white than what you want. To end up with and then the last step we're going to do is come back and ripple this water and that's going to really make some of these shadows and all so make sure your water's got good colors in it reflecting colors i've got a couple of little rocks under here that are reflecting that are going to show through when i ripple also down here the reflections of these rocks when i put those ripples on there that's going to show through maybe a little bit but let's start there with a uh with just a flat brush little one so out of the way here mid tone dark value doesn't have to be black doesn't have to be any anything but dark I'm gonna put a little bit of a little bit of white in it so it's not pure black and in the places where the water will have shadows where there will be rocks underneath kind of here I'm gonna put the white streaks back on top of it but this will show through mm -hmm. And we'll keep my, my brush strokes with the flow. This can kind of be an underpainting for what your for what your water's going to do. I feel like mine's going to kind of flow this way and maybe change direction as it comes down, mm -hmm. at least on that side. Now it's going to be super bright up there, so I don't care if that's got a shadow to it. Mm -hmm. But in here, and definitely in here, there's going to be some shadowing. See how that's working. Mm -hmm. In here will be pretty dark, pretty good shadowing showing through there. Some under here. This just is really just makes your white show up better. A um, little under there, under here. So this is kind of a shelf here, where this under here would be darker. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense? Yeah. flattens out as we go down there. I just want to make, make my lines kind of soft through most of this. Dark here. Where the water's going to fall over that ridge. Imaginary ridge. Maybe a little bit here. Like I said, everybody's is going to be different with this part. And you know, past here, everything's kind of flat water. Mm -hmm. um, drop down. All right, so that's so far. Uh, real quickly, if you'll hit that just 10 seconds with a blow. The reason you want to dry that is because if you start putting this water on and it looks bad, you want to be able to wipe it off. Um, so it's hard to tell mixing from a plate and then going up there to see how dark you're going to want this. I just want this to be dirty. I want to have room, like I said, to make it brighter. And this is my smallest fan brush. I wish I had one half this size and because it's going to be to get in these little cracks. So the trick to this is keep your brush perpendicular to the canvas. Let the bristles do the work and you want to start flat and kind of pull and swoop. You would pull and kind of pull down. So this top edge here would kind of pull this way and then just going to pull some water down. And the brush will do a lot of the work. And I'll come back and clean this up to my liking. And I kind of went sideways with that. You probably want to go straight down <laughs> with your with your swoops. And where it would hit another rock, go a little further. Now, I went wide because of my uh, 
my brush was too wide, but that's okay. <laughs> that's why you want it dry. It's easy enough to just come back and wipe some of that off before it gets too dry. And then on the right actually kind of works. It's precision wiping. <laughs> yeah, it does. I think I'll leave that one alone. It, it's kind of flowing that way, but that's the way the rocks go. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of want to let it, let yours tell you where where it is, where it wants to go. And you do need some water in this to make it work right. This is this is my stiff brush because it's going to give me more fine lines. And just want to use the very tips of it. And if I can do the small sections with just a corner, that's even better. You got to leave some of that some of that dark stuff showing through there. I'm going to come back with my liner and put some trickles above there because I got some water coming out of rocks here that don't really have a, a starting point up mm. top. Some of this. A lot of this on this side is going to be um, really bright so it's going to get another layer of this. This area here is kind of hard to tell what's going on, but that's okay. I want a little bit of chaos in there when I can get it. We can get the chaos right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, randomness. Here. Do some chaos. <laughs> it's making this stuff look right. It's supposed to look right. <laughs> cool. And some are going to go left, some are going to go right. Um, let your rocks tell you where to go. Flat rock right bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flat rock right bar. There you go. That big old waterfall back there. See how the the underpainting mm -hmm. stuff made such a difference in the shape, though. Yeah. I'm not going to get too much up in here because we're going to come back to that later. On my on my stuff here with my my rock in front here, I want to make sure not to get on that rock. But I also don't want to come right up to it and stop. So while it's while it's there, it works good to kind of paint it on and wipe it off. Mm -hmm. So one more time, ten more seconds. I'll go back and do some more of this this uh, step mm -hmm. myself with some a, a liner brush and some more little detailed stuff. But then I just want to show you how the process is going to work. Then we're going to come back with this really watery wash blue gray mm -hmm. and going to tint all of the water on one side and it's it's really just going to be a wash that goes over top of everything it may take a couple of layers but we'll wash the water that's here and then but we're going to also do our ripple water too so we may wait till the very end to do a good wash on the whole thing but the water on this side will have this gray tint to it that's barely showing up it may need a little more a little less water than that Especially on the the shadow parts of it, so it'd be a little darker overall, just a darker shade over here, with a pretty distinct line, angled line, mm -hmm. to where the sunlight's coming across the other side. Okay. Then on your right side stuff, that's when we're going to take straight gesso, and at the very end we might even put some titanium white in there. And on these really bright highlighted areas, come back and highlight just the brightest stuff and you can look at your picture or you can just kind of go with what yours what yours is telling you where the sunlight's going to come but you got to think our sunlight's coming from behind mm -hmm. this cluster of trees coming across those trees all of this right in here is going to be pretty bright and in order to have something look bright you got to have the stuff behind it be dark right um, so those are the steps we're going to do the underpainting we're going to do the highlights the, the low lights come back later we're going to scrub in the bottom and then we'll we'll shade some of that as well but Let's work on that the first half, and then we'll do the ripples the second half. Oh, what I left is to do the ripples in the rocks, the ripples and in the water the ripples, around the rocks. The ripples. And we're going to put them in and then color them blue. You see how dark the blue side of this is? And I may even do another layer over there on some of that to make it even darker. But I'm going to use my little flat brush. If you've got um, something that will keep a flat edge and kind of small, it can be a stiffer bristle. This one's soft. But I'll use it almost dry to make this uh, to make these ripples. So to start with, my where are they going to go? First of all, um, I see in this picture they're kind of down, you know, towards the rock. I'm, I'm going to kind of come down about this far with the white part of it, and then they don't just stop. It's they kind of 
they just get you know fewer as they go out. And this left side is pretty dark. There's you know much fewer. Um, and then the little specks and things floating in the water will do some of that too. But so I'm going to come in with a a not quite white again. It's got some water in it, but I'm definitely going to mostly use a dry brush on this. Get a little bit whiter. So we're going to color a blue later. And you just kind of got to do a quick back and forth. Up here, they're really close together. A little bit of paint. And if you, if you start light, start with a light touch, and as the paint runs out of the brush, you can kind of scrub a little bit, a little more. This has to be horizontal. <laughs> My rock edge there, I'm gonna have to just go up to it and then wipe it off. So I'm just gonna do that real quick and be prepared to be prepared to wipe that off. And I was just painting on that rock so it was dry. If not, I'll come back and fix it again. Yeah, I had covered all that up where I had got some white on there before. That's one of the last things I'll do is come back and clean that rock up. At the, uh, at the underside of any of these rocks, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a, a bottom edge to it, following the shape of my rock but at the same time keeping it horizontal. Kind of plants it firmly in the water. So you see that the trick is leaving some of that color showing through. That's why we put all that green there. As I get further down, I want to use bigger strokes. Still horizontal. I still hadn't put any more paint in this brush. It's pretty much dry, but it's showing up good on that, that dark underneath. that how that works um, over here got a lot of white because it's the sunlight's hitting it over here so there's a lot more that's showing up make sure to go off the canvas there's not a whole lot to that as I come back over to the other side, like I said, I want to do a lot less of it. Use just the tip of the brush so these are kind of lighter, harder to see. A little bit of paint here. Start up there with it so I can get the paint out of my brush. I do want some over here, just not not super bright, not, but much of it. And if you did this underpainting right, it's so dark over here, this is not showing up all that well anyway. And if you get a part that's that's whiter than it should be, you know, got, got some paint. I made it a little too white. That's okay. Dry it out. Come back over top of what's already there. Just kind of scrub that out. If it looks like there's a rock under the water that made a little ripple, that won't hurt anything at all. Wet the tip of the brush a little. I want to have a little bit of this over here because I do want to be able to tin it with that blue. That off, but that's a little, a little heavy on that. Try to demonstrate that, but it didn't work out right. Slight amount over here. If you don't like it, wipe it off and do it again. <laughs> Up here under the rocks, you definitely need to go ahead and create the shapes. Mm -hmm. There's always more, more white and more ripple around the, the edges. Water's more disturbed on the edges. I think I'm going to do a little more under this rock. That's, that's yes. about the about the effect we want. Now you see there's some little flecks in here, some little um, things floating in the water, whatever. I've already got some spray paint dots down there. That's going to serve <laughs> as, as that. Now 
and this is pretty dry because I've just put it on. But the last thing to do, and I'll just use another thicker brush for that with that blue. And I, I, I really don't want a lot of gesso in this because it's it'll cover that dark yeah. stuff if it has gesso in it. I'd really rather it just be really watery. But you put a smidge of this up? I had a little in my brush accidentally. It's probably got just a bit in it, but that's mostly water. This is 90% water. And it may take a few coats to really show up, but I really want to just kind of color all of that water on that side kind of blue, mm -hmm. the shadow color. Mm -hmm. Don't want to have a hard line where I stop. I'm just going to kind of fade it over to the other side. Now that side over there leaves it white. I think that's probably good enough. I'm gonna put some little flecks and leaves floating and things in there and then I'm gonna sign it and be done with it. Y'all got that? Yeah.